Hi! Hello! It's Prachi. I am just like, I'm having kind of a blah day. Like I woke up today and I was just like not feeling it. I had like terrible period cramps. It's gotten really cold all of a sudden. And so to kind of cheer myself up, I took a shower with my like fancy bath shit and I've put on some like bougie ass makeup. So I decided to wear the only piece of Victoria Beckham makeup I own, which is the Lid Luster in Mink. And then I'm also wearing Charlotte Tilbury's lipstick in Very Victoria. And I've decided I want to talk about one of my favorite things ever, and that is my perfume collection. I'm hoping that the combo of warm tea, my favorite perfumes, and the aesthetic energy of Posh Spice will just like carry me through this day. So without any further ado, let's get it! Like I was saying, this is basically my perfume inventory video. For those of you who maybe missed it, I've made the decision to go on a no buy year for the entirety of 2022, which means no makeup, no skincare, no hair care, no perfume, no books, paper, stationery. And so I wanted to film like a little inventory video at the start of the year discussing all of the perfumes that I had. And then at the end of the year, we can kind of check back in and see if I've managed to actually use some stuff up. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be going over the 14 different full-size bottles of perfume I have. So I define full-size as 30 milliliters and up, as well as the 19 travel size and sample size perfume vials that I have. I did some preliminary legwork. I looked up the notes of all of these perfumes and I am going to tell you what they are, but I'm also going to give you more like my review slash scent impression of each and every single perfume. I feel like perfume is one of those things that as much as I really enjoy it, it's a little bit difficult to talk about and explain what's going on because it's so highly personal. I think more so even than makeup, like scent itself is like very heavily linked to a lot of different emotions and memories. And so different things smell really pleasant or unpleasant to different people based off of like where you were the first time you smelled something like that. And then on top of that, everybody's like skin and body chemistry is kind of different. So a perfume which smells like great on somebody else or maybe on a piece of paper might smell like hot garb on you, right? Like I'm one of those people who, um, Lilavo Santal 33, I think it smells so good on other people, but on me, it smells like pickle juice. Like straight up, like I took a dill cucumber pickle and then like rubbed it all over my wrist. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles, you know? I'm also one of those people on whom a lot of fruity type of scents smell really, really bad. A lot of the time, what my body ends up doing is it sort of really amps up the sweetness of the fruit to the point where I kind of smell like a farmer's market at the end of a really, really hot summer's day. Sickly sweet on the verge of rotting. So let's maybe talk about my most recent acquisitions. So my birthday just passed, I'm a January baby and a Capricorn, and I actually received not one, but two perfume bottles from various friends and family members. From my parents, I received a 100 milliliter bottle of Atelier Cologne's Vanille Insensé. So according to Atelier Cologne's website, the top notes are lime, citrone, coriander, middle notes are vetiver, oak moss, and jasmine, and base notes are vanilla, oak, and amber. This is probably my favorite winter perfume of all time. I have used up two of these travel size 10 milliliter vials. This is my third one and it's like maybe a quarter of the way done. So honestly, like at this point, it is more economical for me to just have gotten this full size. And I'm so glad that like my parents were willing to get this for me for my birthday. I am actually not really very much so a fan of vanilla scents. Which is to say that I love the smell of vanilla, but I think in so many different perfumes, vanilla is sickeningly sweet. It can have, depending on how the perfume is composed, a very sort of syrupy, sticky, cloying sensation. And I just, I despise vanillas like that. I really cannot stand them. I want something like fresher and softer without sort of the harsh, screeching edges of vanilla. Like, I don't want vanilla that smells like a cupcake. I want vanilla that smells like a vanilla bean pot. You know, like that sort of like earthy, woody type of natural vanilla scent. Not like a sugared up vanilla. And that's what this perfume is. Like, yes, this is vanilla, but because it opens with like a lime coriander situation, there's an immediate like freshness and herbiness which cuts right through any sort of intense sweetness that the vanilla would have. And then the dry down is like 
a woody, subtle, nice smelling vanilla. This perfume is like a compliment bomb. Like every time I go hug somebody and I'm wearing this perfume, they comment on it. They're like, wow, Prachi, like you smell really, really good. It also, on my skin, has really, really good lasting power. This is genuinely like one of my favorite perfumes of all time. Like if I wasn't one of those people that owns 14 bottles of perfume, if instead I was a person who only owned four bottles of perfume, one for each season because I'm one of those people who like I cannot wear the same scent the entire year like if I were to wear this perfume in the summer my body would not be having a good time because it would probably end up giving me a headache but if I ever get my perfume collection down to just four right one perfume for each season like this is unquestionably the king of the winter perfumes like this would be the one that I would want to have for the cold months the other perfume that I received for my birthday and this was you guys, this was so touching. A couple of my friends like pooled together and got me a combined birthday present to buy me this perfume, which is genuinely like so sweet. But it is the iconic Diptyque Philosikos. Philosikos? Philosikos? I don't really know. Uh, I do know that the name means lover of figs and that the general idea behind this perfume is that it is supposed to evoke all of the different parts of a fig tree. So not just like the milky sweet smell of figs themselves, but also sort of like the woody scent of the bark and the fresh green leafy scent of fig leaves. According to the website, the top notes are fig leaf and fig, the middle notes are green notes and coconut, and the base notes are fig tree, woody notes, and cedar. I have had a love affair with this perfume for literal years. Like, you guys don't even know. I used to, when I lived in Toronto, I used to commute every single day through Yorkdale Mall. And sometimes on my way back from class, if the mall was still open and if I had a little bit of time, I would actually just like walk around Yorkdale Mall. And Yorkdale Mall, for those of you who don't live in Toronto, it is like a really, really posh mall. It is like a rich people mall. Yorkdale Mall has like a Gucci store and a YSL store and like a whole bunch of other insane high-end brands. I think the most reasonable place to shop at Yorkdale Mall is like Muji. So my broke ass would like walk around this mall window shopping, like seeing how the rich people live. And every once in a while, I would like dare to step into the department stores like Hold Rent Fruit. Like I would never dare to step into like a Gucci or a YSL. Like the air in those stores is too expensive for me to breathe. And Holt Renfrew is where all of the diptyque shit was. And literally years ago, this is like pre-COVID, pre-Rona, because I was like commuting to school every day. One of the times that I stepped into the Holt Renfrew, I like went over to the diptyque section to see what was going on. They were like, hey, there's this perfume called Philosikos. I think you'll really like it. Let me spray it on your wrist. You can walk around the mall and decide if you really want it. And let me tell you, it was love at first spray. I just like, I don't know how they did it. I don't even like figs that much as like an actual fruit, but this scent, it really does smell like you are outside in some sort of like an orchard, right? There is that incredible green leafy quality to it, almost like the smell of cut grass, but it doesn't have the earthiness that grass has. It has more of like a leafy green fresh quality to it. You definitely get the woodiness of the tree bark, but it's not too like sharp and in your face because there is that like coconut accord and that fig accord, which are kind of like sweeter and milkier to kind of round the whole composition out. I'm obsessed with it. I have been obsessed with it for years. Every opportunity that I have ever gotten to like spray myself with this walking past or through a department store, I have taken. And for years and years and years and years, I told myself that when I graduate and then I pay off my student loan debt, one of the first things I'll do when I'm like debt free is I will actually go out and I'll buy myself a bottle of this perfume. Because the thing is, this is not a super expensive perfume. Like there are like $300 perfumes that exist out there, right? But this is much more money than like my student ass could like ever afford. And so I had set that as a goal. And so the fact that like a bunch of my friends actually kind of pooled together their finances and combined to get this for me as like a birthday present in the very year in which I made the decision that like, yes, I'm going to pay off my student loan debt, I'm gonna do it. Like, it's just, it makes it so special and beautiful and meaningful. <laughs> the Diptyque bottles are beautiful. They are incredibly distinctive, very like classy. I love that there's like a little drawing on the back of what looks like a Greek paradise. My friends also got this like gift wrapped for me. So it came in like the most beautiful like box and wrapping paper with like a little card. Like everything about receiving this perfume was exquisite. My experience of using this perfume has been exquisite. And going back to that paradigm of if I could only have four perfumes, one for each season, um, I think this would unquestionably be spring. 
Okay, so maybe let me stick to that paradigm of talking about my favorite perfume of all time for each season, and let's discuss my all-time favorite summer perfume. It is the one, the only, the legendary Jo Malone Wood Sage and Sea Salt. If I'm around other people and I'm wearing this perfume, usually somebody almost always says something. Like this is just one of those things that I think smells so good on me. This smells like the ocean. By which I mean it smells like the idealized fantasy version of the ocean that exists inside all of our heads and not the sort of like nasty gross smell that oceans and beaches can sometimes have in real life. But this, this is not the gross beach smell. This is not even like a lot of people associate the beach with like a sunscreen smell, that, that fake sort of like Hawaiian tropic sunscreeny coconut situation. This is not it at all. This is like the smell of the ocean and salt and driftwood. And here's like another example of how perfumes and scents generally are like so heavily keyed in with our emotions and our memories. I was born and raised in Nepal and that's a landlocked country. We are like in the middle of the Himalayas. We're surrounded by mountains. There's no ocean in sight. And so as much as I'm like a daughter of the mountains, from a very young age, I have always just kind of been like obsessed with the beach and the ocean. And I have a very clear and vivid memory of the first time that my dad ever took my sister and I to Goa in India and we like experienced the beach and the ocean, that beautiful sort of like salty, briny smell. And when I smelled wood sage and sea salt for the first time, it just, I was kind of like hit with that sensation as a child again. And that sort of like scent memory that wood sage and sea salt triggers is I think the reason why I have named this like my number one summer perfume, right? Because actually, ugh, if I like really stop and I think about it, it is exorbitantly priced for how terrible the longevity is on my skin. If I spray this at the start of a hot summer's day, like it is gone by the evening. I absolutely have to reapply. And given just how obscenely expensive Jo Malone is, like Jo Malone is honestly, it's kind of like Diptyque Philosico's kind of territory, but whereas Philosico's is like a powerhouse that lasts on my body for the entire goddamn day, no question, wood sage and sea salt like does not do that. But honestly, like if you know of a perfume that smells like wood sage and sea salt, but it has like better longevity, like please let me know because the scent of this, it really is that same glorious feeling that I felt the very first time I saw the ocean in real life, like its vastness, the immensity, the awe, the like sheer joy, like I feel it every time I spray this perfume. And that's incredible that somebody has kind of like bottled that feeling for me, but I hate that it doesn't last. And I just realized I never read the notes to you guys. So the notes for Jo Malone's wood, sage, and sea salt are predictably sea salt and sage, along with red algae and grapefruit, and then ambrette seed as the base, which I believe ambrette seed is, um, it's kind of like a slightly musky smell, which this definitely does have, but it's like a lighter musk. Red algae is really throwing me for a loop because that sounds like it would smell gross, and yet this smells incredible. So yeah, those are the actual notes. Um, you can just listen to that instead of the like 10 goddamn minutes I spent talking about how this is a fantasy ocean. <laughs> so while we're on the topic of Jo Malone, let me also discuss the only other Jo Malone scent I own, which is this 30 milliliter bottle of Blackberry and Bay. This was actually the very first Jo Malone perfume I ever bought, and I only had the cojones to buy it because somebody gave me a $30 gift card to Sephora. As the name Blackberry and Bay would suggest, the notes listed for this on Jo Malone's website are literally Blackberry, Bay Leaves, and Cedarwood. That's really it. This is a very, very straightforward Blackberry scented perfume. I think that the addition of the Bay Leaf scent, it adds a sort of freshness and herby greenness that creates a very sort of different kind of blackberry scent than what you would expect. Because a lot of the time I find in perfumes, when people put in berry scents, they also put in a lot of like vanilla and maybe even coconut. Like they put a lot of creamy, warm scents alongside the berry so that you get an overall effect of kind of like berries and cream. And the unique thing about Blackberry and Bay, the thing which drew my attention was the fact that it wasn't giving you a sort of like berries and cream, warm bakery feeling. It instead gives the vibe of like 
I'm a Jane Austen heroine walking through the English countryside and I come up on a hedgerow of like blackberry bushes and the blackberries look so juicy and enticing I can like smell them fresh in the English countryside air and that that's the blackberry and bay vibe. It's like a fresh, juicy, tart, leafy blackberry smell. The longevity on this is like not very good. I think I get maybe like five hours of it on my skin, so it doesn't even last like a full work day. Sometimes I can like eke out a couple more hours if I like apply oil or lotion right before I put the perfume on. But I think with the majority of Jo Malone scents, you just kind of have to resign yourself to, I paid a lot of money for this, but it's never gonna be a scent that I can like put on in the morning and it will still be there in the evening. I do tend to use this a lot in the spring and summer. And I will say that Blackberry and Bay is one of the few perfumes in the world that has the distinction of being a very fruit forward perfume while not smelling like it's rotting on my skin. Maybe while we're still on the topic of summer perfumes, let me discuss the two other like super fresh summery scents that I have. So the older one of the two, I actually bought this one in 2020 as one of the 20 items I was allowing myself to purchase that year, my low buy year. It is the Bulgari Omnia Crystalline. The story of this perfume is that during my no buy year, I had only one bottle of fresh smelling perfume and it was a 100 milliliter bottle of Commodities Rain. It was basically this very like fresh, floral, aquatic type of a scent. I had had it for a couple of years and I used it all throughout my Nova year in 2019 and then all throughout the summer of 2020. And then in August, I finished that bottle. I'm gonna see if I can like find a photo of the empty bottle if I like took one before I moved because I remembered holding on to it thinking like I would want to film an empties video and then when I moved countries I was like fuck that noise I threw it away. Um, so I'm gonna see if I like have a photo of the empty bottle and I'm gonna put it up here. But after Commodity Rain finished I had nothing and it was still August. It was still like sweltering hot in Toronto. I never really like talked about this because this was around the time I was like really kind of struggling and I eventually like kind of stopped filming in like September, October of that year. But during 2020, like when lockdown first happened, I pretty much like stopped wearing makeup because it was just kind of like, what is the point? You know, like at that point in time, like, I don't know if y'all remember this, but like masks were in really, really short supply. I had been lucky enough that one of my friends had an extra box of masks sent to him from like his parents in Hong Kong and he gave it to me and that like box of masks, there were like 50 of them in there, I think, that was all I had. So even though they were like disposable masks, you were supposed to throw them away. Like I was literally like washing my disposable masks and trying to like use them for as long as possible because at this point in time, like we didn't have access to PPE. It was in short supply in the entire country. They were like, please, for the love of God, like don't hoard masks. And so the idea of like wearing a bunch of makeup to dirty up a mask when my masks were already in short supply, like that was ridiculous and stupid. And so I basically like stopped wearing makeup. Oh. I know how to explain this. You know how I opened today's video talking about how I was just having like a garbage day. I was really just not feeling it. And in order to help me get my shit together, I showered. And then what did I do? I wore makeup. I deliberately wore some of my favorite bougiest makeup items. I channeled the energy of Posh Spice in order to like get me through the day. And that sort of like cheerleader, confidence boosting, perk me up, armor to actually like get me through the day, that role has been played by makeup for pretty much like as long as I have ever worn makeup. Because putting on makeup, it felt like a clear delineation of like a before and an after. Maybe I was not ready to face the day and like do the shit I gotta do before I sat down to put on makeup. But now that I've put the makeup on, now that I'm physically ready, I am also like mentally ready for everything else that the day is about to throw at me. And so when I suddenly like couldn't wear makeup anymore, my entire life got thrown out of whack. There was no delineation between when I felt blah and unready to face the world and when I felt ready to face the world and like the shit that I needed to get done in my life. And what happened over time during quarantine is I had to develop a new routine, a new sort of getting ready process and delineation that would help me like get ready to face the world. And what I eventually developed was washing my face, doing my skincare, and spraying on perfume. It may not have been as visual of a trigger of transformation as makeup was, but it was still a sensory trigger. There was still like a distinct difference between the me from before that didn't smell like anything and the me now, which is like good smelling and good to go. 
I know that seems like really dramatic, but like dead ass, like that was the role that perfume was playing for me midway through like the 2020 lockdown. Because otherwise I just like, I could not, I was having so much difficulty just dragging myself out of bed to do basic things and like live. And so whatever the fuck helped me, helped me. And perfume was one of those things where it was like, okay, get up Prachi, wash your face, put on some cream, spray yourself with commodity rain, get ready to tackle the day. And so when commodity rain fucking ran out, I was like, oh no, 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 no. I need a summer perfume. Cause like I tried genuinely for like a couple weeks, I tried to wear some of the other perfumes I own that were like wintery based perfumes. And honestly, it gave me a migraine cause those perfumes are like way too heavy for a Toronto summer. And so I was like, damn, should I just like repurchase Commodity Rain? But unfortunately for me, Commodity was no longer sold in Sephora. And so I was like, okay, great. Now I need to like find a new perfume <laughs> that still gives me like that mood boost that Commodity Rain does. And it can't be Commodity Rain because I have no access to it anymore. So I like sat and I thought about it for a little while. And I remembered that in 2019, I had gone to visit my aunt and uncle after like the academic year was over. And when my aunt had come to pick me up at the airport, I had hugged her and she had smelled so good. And I remember asking her right off the bat, I was like, what is that perfume? And it was this, it was Bulgari Omnia Crystalline. And my aunt, like she's the kind of person who the moment I told her I liked her perfume, she then tried to like give me her perfume, right? When we got home, she was like, yeah, Praji, this is what it is. If you really like it, you should take it. And I was like, no, 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 no. Because you know, at this point I was in the no buy year. Also, this was like her perfume. She really liked the scent of it. I didn't want to like take that from her and then have her have to like buy another one. Um, this is the same aunt, by the way, who during that trip bought me um, the Bobbi Brown lipstick in Telluride, which I had been like lusting after. So she's very much so like a fairy godmother, a gift giving aunt. Like I hope to one day be as cool of an aunt to my nieces and nephews as she was to me. Um, she, she really means a lot. But either way, so this was her perfume for that like entire trip. And the whole trip, I just couldn't stop thinking about how good she smelled. And so kind of remembering that. And I'm and I'm going to be like 100% honest with you. I was also just very lonely during lockdown. I missed people, so I kind of wanted something that smelled like family members. I ended up going out and buying this is a 65 milliliter bottle of Bulgari Omnia Crystalline. And let me tell you, this shit smells just as good as I remember. So the official notes for Omnia Crystalline are bamboo and pear for the top notes, lotus tea and cassia for the middle notes, and then base notes of musk, guaiac wood, and oak musk. This to me is like another one of those things which it, it immediately evokes scent memory. One, not only does it smell like my aunt during the 2019 trip, but one of the reasons why I thought it smelled so good on her during that trip was because it reminds me of like gardens that I recall visiting when I was really young and still living in Nepal. And I think that must come from like the smell of lotus, tea, and bamboo, because the thing that this kind of vaguely smells like to me is the garden of the principal of my school. They have like this garden with like a lotus pond and a bunch of really beautiful, fresh, fragrant smelling plants. It was like a very like herbaceous and fresh smelling garden with the lotus flowers in the pond being probably like the dominant scent. Omnia Crystalline, like the name would suggest, it really does have that sort of like luminous, sparkling, fresh quality. When I first smelled it, I don't know why, like my brain immediately went lemongrass. And there is no lemongrass in this. I think that what, what I'm calling lemongrass in my head is probably some combination of like bamboo, tea, and maybe cassia. But honestly, that like fresh, zingy, herby smell of lemongrass is, is what I kind of get from this perfume. And I really, really love it. It genuinely is just such a fresh, beautiful scent. It is truly in heavy competition with wood sage and sea salt as like the summer scent for me. Thought, let me speed it up. I feel like I've been talking for ages and we have only gotten through five of the 14 full-size bottles of perfume I own, much less like any of the tubes. Okay, so the other sort of main summery perfume that I have, and I actually bought this earlier this year, and this was what I used for the vast majority of summer 2021. It's the one, the only, the classic, the iconic Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. 
The thing with light blue is that a lot of people consider it to be a basic bitch perfume. But you want to know something? Like basic bitches have a point. Like just because something is really really popular does not mean it is no longer good. Like yeah, my favorite artist is Vincent Van Gogh, but that's because he's a fucking legend whose paintings are incredible. Van Gogh is mainstreamed for a reason, you know, like because his work and his life story resonate with like tons of people out there. Similarly, I have found that when a scent has like intense mass appeal, a lot of people immediately begin to get all like hipstered up. They start like bad mouthing the scent. They're like, oh, only really like basic people wear this. This is very blah, 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 whatever. Because everyone likes to feel like they're special and everyone likes to feel like they're exclusive. And so people love to be like, all of the basic perfumes are not for me. You would catch me dead in the streets before I'd ever wear Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana. But let me tell you a thing. I had one of those like travel size 10 ml tubes of Dolce & Gabbana Blight Blue that I had bought earlier in the year um, because I don't like buying full 100 milliliter bottles unless I like know exactly what I'm getting into because um, here's a fun fact about me. I can't believe I haven't brought it up earlier in the video, I'm um, a migraine prone person. Not only that, but scents which previously used to not trigger migraines can very quickly in the blink of an eye begin triggering migraines. In, in like my personal history, Tom Ford Black Orchid is the biggest culprit because I love that scent for like months and I ended up like saving up a bunch of my money and like buying a bottle of it and I was able to successfully use the bottle for like three months and then something happened and now every single time I smell Black Orchid by Tom Ford it triggers like a really bad headache. But either way the point of that is like I like to very heavily test out a scent before I commit to buying like a full 100 milliliter bottle of it. And when when I bought that goddamn tube of Dolce and Gabbana light blue, people stopped me on the fucking streets of Baltimore when I like came here to visit my mom and dad to ask me what the hell it was I was wearing because this bitch just smells so good on my skin. Like I don't, it is a mystery to me. I don't know what crack like Dolce and Gabbana sprinkled in this shit that like perfectly melds with my skin, but this smells ridiculously good on my skin. When my family, including the aunt who uses Bulgari Omnia Crystalline, when they all like came over earlier this year after we had all been like vaccinated, everyone was asking me what I was wearing, why it smelled so good, and if they could get it. So much so that I actually gave my aunt the 10 ml travel size tube that I had of this and I bought this like full size perfume. So I bought it online. I did not buy it for the full retail price. I think I bought it from like Fragrance Net or one of the other websites like that. You know, like one of those like online fragrance retailers. This is authentic, like this is real. This is not like a fake thing. It smells exactly like the legit 10 ml tube that I bought from like a Dolce & Gabbana store. In general, musk is one of those notes that smells really, really good on my skin. I know it doesn't smell great on everybody. There are a lot of people on whom musk fragrances end up smelling really kind of like skanky and dirty and if that is the case I don't know how well you're necessarily gonna fare with light blue but if you enjoy fresh citrusy woody musk scents this is one of the most popular scents of all time for a reason when I first started work back in October this was the perfume that I wore into the office every single day because I was like nobody is gonna have a problem with this and you want to know something nobody did have a problem with this okay my camera battery died so while I am recharging my camera battery um, in order to not like lose all sense of daylight I am now filming with my phone so apologies for the drop in video quality but also I had no idea what the hell I was saying before my camera cut out um, except Dolce & Gabbana light blue She's good. I just realized I don't think I ever told you guys what the notes of these are. So the top notes are Sicilian lemon, apple, cedar, and bellflower. The middle notes are bamboo, jasmine, and white rose. And the base notes are cedar, musk, and amber. I will say that the overwhelming smell on my skin when I first spray this, it's the lemon. It's definitely the Sicilian lemon. And then after a little bit of time, I get apple. And I think what like the apple, the jasmine, and the white rose do is they just kind of soften it out so it's not this like harsh, screechy Lysol scent. And the base notes, it's definitely very much so a musky, woody scent for me. I don't really get amber on my skin. This remains overwhelmingly a very fresh, light scent. And amber I associate as being like a little heavier and a little warmer. 
and I and I don't really get that. Let's talk about another like award-winning fragrance that's very very popular and which a lot of people use. I have a 30 milliliter bottle of Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. So I actually I received this 30 milliliter bottle from a family member as a gift when I graduated back in June and I'm so incredibly grateful for it because Coco Mademoiselle is like one of those fragrances that I have honestly been obsessed with since I was like a teenager. Part of that, if, if I'm being like honest, is like I had a crush on Kira Knightley and Kira Knightley was the spokesperson for Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. And so for years, all of the Kira Knightley adverts for Chanel Coco Mademoiselle, they lived rent free inside my head. I was obsessed with the scent, but I also had like absolutely no way to smell it. And I literally think it wasn't until I was maybe like 18 or 19 years old, so almost like a decade ago, that I was finally able to go to like a department store and smell this for the very first time. It was literally like all of my dreams had been shattered. It was just, it was such an intensely strong scent. And there is something in this perfume. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's like the patchouli note, which really did not mesh well with my skin at age 18. I remember thinking very vividly that this was a very like harsh, loud screechy scent like it did not give me a Kira Knightley vibe at all I was like damn like why is she endorsing this I think I was like even more betrayed because if you like read the notes that are present in this perfume it sounds like it would be like incredibly good smelling right so the top notes are orange mandarin orange bergamot and orange blossom the middle notes are turkish rose jasmine mimosa and lang lang and the base notes are patchouli white musk vanilla vetiver tonka bean and Opoponax. Don't know what the hell that is. Reading that description at like age 18, I assumed I would be getting like an orange blossom and jasmine scent with like a little bit of musk and vanilla, right? I thought we were getting fresh, fun, flirty, light, classy, like Kira Knightley. And that is not what it smelled like to like 18 year old me at all. I would argue that this is like a very strong scent. Um, it's not as strong as like Chanel number no. five. Chanel number no. five, the moment you spray it, it like breaks through your wall like the Kool-Aid man. Like Chanel number no. five is ridiculous, right? It is, it's like a 70 year old lady who does not give a fuck. The most badass person in society is an older lady because older ladies have had it up to here. They are tired of everyone's bullshit. They will get things done. You know, like the iron fisted matriarch of a household that everybody is like afraid of she's just like a Banff lady who has like been through some shit in her life and now she's like she's done caring what other people think she's gonna get shit done her way that's it that's every like that's what Chanel number no. five is Chanel number no. five has that sort of like big dick energy that old ladies have and I would argue that with the exception of the like Chanel Chance line, like the Chance Au Tendre and all that kind of stuff, which Chance Au Tendre literally smells like Marc Jacobs Daisy. So with the exception of like that line, the vast majority of Chanel perfumes that I have smelled, they have that same sort of like kick down the door boss bitch energy, like in that they are just, they are strong perfumes with hella personality and presence. And 18 year old me was just, it was not ready for that shit, you know? I was so thoroughly scarred at age 18 by how terrible the smell that I avoided it for years and when I went to go visit this family member shortly after graduation she had two bottles of Chanel Coco Mademoiselle a sealed 30 ml bottle that's this one and then like an open 50 ml bottle that she was actually like using and she encouraged me to try it on my wrist and so I plucked up my courage I sprayed it on my wrist and 27 year old me loved this shit I still think the opening it's doing a lot I don't really enjoy my first like hour of this perfume, but after like the first hour or two of Chanel Coco Mademoiselle, something about this really like begins to gel well with my skin. And it ends up just smelling simultaneously very, very soft and very, very sultry. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I'm so sorry. Chanel perfumes are, in my personal opinion, some of the hardest perfumes to explain the scent of to somebody who has never smelled them before. Like there could be a million dollars on the line if I could just successfully explain to somebody what Chanel number no. five smells like. And like I would lose that million dollars because there's no way to explain what a Chanel fragrance smells like to someone who's never smelt it before. Like I think when it opens, there is still a very like sharp and almost sickly sweet quality to Chanel Coco Mademoiselle that I, I still am not like the biggest fan of. And in fact, when like Ruma Pupu first like sprayed this on my hand, I was like, mm, I don't really know how I feel about this. But a couple hours in when I smelled my wrist again, it smelled so good. 
let me you know let me talk about both chanel fragrances in tandem because that experience of hating the opening of a chanel fragrance but then falling in absolute love with the dry down of a chanel fragrance i have experienced that with every single chanel fragrance i have ever smelled there is some like witchcraft to the way in which chanel is able to create perfumes that smell like ass for the first two hours that you wear them like they are just it smells like you know that vine of like the the dad playing like a trombone and then the kid is like hitting the microwave i feel like that is the opening of every single chanel perfume it is just like loud and there and you're like this cannot possibly ever turn out to smell good and then like five hours later it has like done its magic it has like sunken into your skin somehow really really well and then i like i can't stop smelling my arm i don't know if that's stockholm syndrome or just the natural evolution of perfume but that's honestly been my experience with every single chanel perfume i've ever smelled since childhood and coco mademoiselle like I now understand like why it won all of those awards. There is something slightly like smoky and sensual and soft smelling about this that in my like late 20s now, I'm like, I'm really digging Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. So I am very, very grateful to Ruma Poopoo for having given me this 30 milliliter bottle. I'm finally able to live like my Kira Knightley crush dreams. <laughs> but only really in like the fall or winter time this is way too heavy for the summertime but in the like cooler crisper months i think this really kind of like warms up my skin in a very beautiful way so that's that on that um i already talked a lot about chanel but one of the 20 purchases i made in 2020 during my low buy year was also this bottle of Chanel number no. five low. So the notes of Chanel number no. five low are, the top notes are aldehydes. And once again, like this is one of the things where it's like, I don't know how to explain what an aldehyde smells like. I genuinely, I cannot describe the smell of Chanel number no. five to you. But I will say it is a very polarizing fragrance and rightfully so. There are a lot of people who cannot stand the smell of Chanel number no. five. Um, they associate it with their grandmas. And like I said, the opening of this, it's, it does a lot. So in fact, this, the Chanel number no. five low. So low literally means water. And the idea behind this is that a lot of people in like my generation, like younger millennials, we cannot stand the smell of the original Chanel number no. five because it's such a like intensely strong smelling scent. So a lot of people my age, we aren't buying Chanel number no. five. And so what Chanel did is what Chanel has always done, which is that like every, let's say 10 years or so, they bring somebody in to create a flanker version of Chanel number no. five that is more suited to the taste of the market that has developed, right? And so they've come out with this flanker, Chanel number no. five low, which has a brighter, fresher, less intense and crazy opening. As somebody who has smelled both the original Chanel number no. five and this, I made the very clear choice to buy the low because I do think the opening is a lot less kind of screechy and loud and crazy smelling than the original. So the top notes in Chanel number no. five low are aldehydes, lemon, neroli, mandarin orange, orange, bergamot, and lime. The middle notes are lang lang, jasmine, and may rose. And the base notes are white musk, orris root, cedar, and vanilla. Because they modified the opening of this perfume to make this like a lot less crazy, it no longer feels like the Kool-Aid man like busting through your wall. It's more like somebody just like walking through your door like, hello, I have arrived. It's still a little loud. It's still a little obnoxious, but there's no property damage happening. You know, like it's not that bad. And at the same time, on me at least, the dry down of Chanel number no. five low still has that like same magical smell good quality that the original Chanel number no. five has. Smell good quality is probably the closest I could get to describing how the dry down of Chanel number no. five works. Once again, I'm so sorry. I'm like useless to you. I, I genuinely don't know how to explain to you what Chanel number no. five smells like. Probably like your grandma, if we're gonna be honest. There is something, it's like very, the way that Chanel number no. five smells at the end of the day it feels like your skin, but like base boosted. I don't know how else to describe it. It really just, it has that sort of like musky, soft quality that you would think good smelling skin has. And there really is something magical about that. Our grandmas knew what was up when they were like all using this perfume. But I mean, you definitely have to endure like a little bit of a headache to get to that good part. So it's it's definitely not for everybody. Um, Chanel perfumes were not even for me for like a really long time in my life. And even now I like always wear them with the caveat of like, I'm not gonna have a good time for the first two hours. 
I'm never gonna have as easy of a relationship with Chanel perfumes as I will with like Jo Malone or Philosicos by Diptyque. I feel like Chanel perfumes really are like a little bit difficult. They're a little bit unlikable. They're very kind of like punchy in your face. I, I really do think they, they have the sort of like energy of an older woman who like does not give a fuck. And maybe it's because I am slowly becoming older and so I increasingly have greater and greater admiration for older women who like don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm like on the Chanel train now. I enjoy the contentious relationship that I have with these. Okay. We're back to the camera now. Hopefully my battery has enough juice to carry me through the rest of this video or else we shall have to revert to the phone <laughs> again. But let's move on to talk about a perfume which I do not have a contentious relationship with at all. And that is this beautiful 50 ml bottle of Terre d'Hermes Eau de Toilette. So I received this as a birthday present last year from my parents. I asked my parents for this perfume because on the same sort of like May 2019 trip in which I went to visit my aunt and uncle, when we got to her house, we actually like spent half a day up in her room talking about all of the different perfumes that not only she, but also my uncle own and use. And both my uncle and my aunt both cited Terre d'Hermes as a perfume that they really, really love to use. So technically I think Terre d'Hermes is a men's perfume, but like whatever, gender and perfumes is absolutely a social construct. The top notes for Terre d'Hermes are orange and grapefruit. The middle notes are pepper and pelargonium. The base notes are vetiver, cedar, patchouli, and benzoin. If you were to ask me what the opening, like the first couple hours of this perfume smell like, I would say that it smells like an orange living its best life, like rolling around in the dirt. Like the terre in terre d'hormes, it literally means like earth. And they were like not joking about that. There is something very, very earthy smelling about this perfume. One of my favorite smells in the world is like petrichor. It's like that sort of like earthy smell right when it starts raining. And I feel like Terre d'Hermes, like it actually like it has a little bit of that, right? It has that like earthy, minerally quality that the scent of like dirt in the rain has. On top of that, the reason why my aunt and uncle love this so much and why I also end up loving this so much is because one of the base notes for this is vetiver and it is like very, very vetiver forward. Vetiver is actually a South Asian plant. It is a type of like grass um, and I never knew that it was called vetiver because growing up in my childhood, people called it couscous. Terre d'Hermes. And so for both my aunt and uncle and me, Terre d'Hermes by being a very like vetiver forward or couscous forward scent, it is this like incredibly nostalgic scent that reminds us of home. For my aunt especially, she actually used to have in her house as a child, they used to actually have like curtains made out of woven vetiver because it's it's a grass right so you you could make curtains and fabric and textile out of it and the reason why you would want these like vetiver curtains is because the grass is fragrant and beautiful and so in the morning somebody would go around and they would like spray water on these vetiver curtains and as the sun kind of hit the water and started heating it up to evaporate it the entire house would then smell like vetiver from those curtains. And so Terre d'Hermes is one of those fragrances where it kind of like wood sage and sea salt, it, it's one of those smells that transports me back to my childhood. It's a very, very nostalgic scent. I will say that unlike wood sage and sea salt, with Terre d'Hermes, it's the dry down, like when the vetiver becomes really, really prominent that I am most excited for. I think the like orange rolling around in dirt, I think that's fine. I think it's a pleasant smell. I don't hate it. I actually like quite enjoy it. But for me, the real star of Terre d'Hermes is its dry down. It's a couple hours in when that vetiver smell becomes really, really pronounced. That's what I'm really, really looking for here. I still have one, two, three, four, five, five bottles of perfume to talk about, but okay. This is a 50 milliliter bottle of the Kiehl's Original Musk Blend Number no. 1. Like I said earlier, um, unless I've edited that part out because this video is gonna be the longest video of my goddamn life. On me, musk ends up smelling like really clean and soft and almost kind of like vaguely soapy. If you are a enjoyer of musk, so if you've smelled things like the Body Shop's White Musk and you want kind of like a softer, more refined version of that, or if you smelled, what's that really old ass perfume? Jovan White Musk and you think that that perfume is like a little bit too kind of like sweet smelling, Kiehl's Original Musk, it like hits the sweet spot. It is softer and more refined smelling than The Body Shop. It is less sweet and cloying than Jovan White Musk. On me, it is like a perfect clean 
smelling skin scent. This is the perfume that I wear when I personally just want to really smell good, but I do not want to be smelled by other people. It just, it smells like an enhanced and better version of me. Don't really know how else to explain the scent, except that, oh, it smells like an old barber shop. If you've ever been in one of those like vintage barber shops, you know how they used to put like oil, like shaving oil on people? It smells like that. It smells like that beautiful, musky, soapy, clean scent. Um, let's talk about another musky perfume, which unfortunately um, does not smell as good on me as I had hoped, and that is Glossier You. Now, the only notes available online for Glossier You are pink pepper, iris, ambret, and ambrox. And ambret seed and ambrox are both like, they're kind of variants of musk. They have like a slight kind of musky quality to them. So since musk scents smell really, really good on me, I ended up when I placed like a Glossier order earlier this year, asking for a sample of this U perfume. And I will say the little like paper sample that they gave, it smelled really, really good. It smelled soft and powdery and clean and fresh and just the way that I wanted to smell. Like I could understand the concept. I understood why they called it Glossier U because much like this Kiehl's perfume, which I feel like just smells like an enhanced version of my own body, that little like sample piece of paper to me smelled like an enhanced and slightly fresher version of my own body's natural scent. So very excitedly, I ordered up a full size bottle of Glossier U. And I don't know if I'm like unhinged, but to me, this smells different than it did in the card. I don't know if it's the presence of pink pepper. I don't know if like the ratio is slightly off. So maybe on the card, like the pink pepper fades really fast. So I didn't smell it as much, but there is like a lot of pink pepper in this perfume. The pink pepper overwhelms everything. It is loud, kind of like screechy. It is like a little bit almost sour. It like never dies down on me. I get that pink pepper note the entire time that I'm wearing this perfume. It literally takes hours and hours and hours for it to go away. And the thing is, I expect that kind of like unhinged screeching madness from Chanel. Like I expect the opening of a Chanel perfume to be wild, but I don't expect that from a fragrance by Glossier called You, right? I expected this to be a perfect soft skin scent and it's not that. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and I will say it does smell like fresh and nice. Dial down the pepper a little bit and maybe dial up the iris just a smidge because iris does provide like a really soft powdery nice note, but I can like barely smell it underneath all that pepper. And so I think this is just fine, but I would not like run out to repurchase this bottle when I am done. Okay, let's talk about BTS. <laughs> so, as you can tell from how long I've been sitting here talking about stuff, I love perfume. I'm obsessed with perfume. So when BTS, the K-pop group, which I love to bits and pieces, announced that they would be collaborating with VT Cosmetics and a French perfume maker to release seven different perfumes, one for each member, I was just like, bitch, they did this for me. <laughs> I'm not delusional. I know they did not just do it for me, but I was very excited is what I was trying to say. Fortunately for my wallet, all seven perfumes that they came out with were not to my taste. A lot of them ended up being like really sweet powdery scents that I think are like targeted much more for like young teenage girls than for anybody else, right? Like, so there was one that was like eau de coton, like it's a cotton scent, um, eau de poudre, which is like a baby powder type of scent. Sorry to Jin and Jimin, but I was just like, I was not interested in eau de poudre and eau de coton. The two scents that did interest me, like based off of the notes that I saw listed were Eau de Bois, which is the perfume designed by the leader of BTS, Kim Namjoon. He's gonna be the future president of South Korea. I can already feel it. And um, the thing about Namjoon is that he actually doesn't really like perfumes. He's like a guy with like a bonsai tree. And if you look at like all of his like office spaces and houses and stuff, it's like a very clean, wooden, minimalistic aesthetic, right? So it makes perfect sense to me that this perfume would be called Eau de Bois, literally water of wood. The top notes for this are coriander and juniper, the middle notes are lavender and ambrette or musk mallow, and the base notes are cedar and my good old friend vetiver. So obviously reading that description, seeing how like woody it smelled like, I ordered it, 
It is a very, very wood forward scent. The promo photos for this had like Namjoon um, in a suit like sitting on like an old antique desk and honestly that's kind of the vibe. You definitely get that like spicy woody scent that you would associate with like wooden desks and library. So you know, good job, well done on the promo images matching the scent. But the real kicker, the real thing that took me out about this perfume is I own a 10 milliliter travel size of Maison Margiela's By the Fireplace. And I genuinely love this perfume. It is a very, very woody perfume. It literally it kind of smells like firewood. There's like a slight spicy, smoky quality to it. I believe vanilla and tonka and cashmere are also present in By the Fireplace, which lend a sort of sweeter quality to this woody perfume than most other woody perfumes. If you remove that like sweet element that is present in By the Fireplace, if you focus purely just on that like woody, spicy element, that By the Fireplace has, it smells dead ass like eau de bois. I could not believe my fucking nose. And like yesterday, just to confirm that like I wasn't tripping or whatever, I did put like By the Fireplace on my left wrist and then eau de bois on my right wrist. And within like an hour, they smelled almost exactly the same. The By the Fireplace side had a slight hint of sweetness to it that the eau de bois side did not have, which makes sense. Like if you look at the notes, there's nothing to add sweetness. It really is just like a purely woody spicy scent. There's no tonka, there's no benzoin, there's no vanilla, there's nothing happening here. It's just pure like woody goodness. But like the woody elements of it smell, I kid you not, exactly like by the fireplace. And the reason why I'm in like such disbelief about the like sheer dumb luck of these two perfumes smelling really similar to each other despite having completely different concepts is because if you read the like notes for by the fireplace and then the notes for Atelier de Sutil Eau de Bois, the only note that they have in common is juniper. Like none of the other notes overlap and yet they have somehow produced Perfumes that smell identical on my skin with just a little bit of added sweetness on the by the fireplace side. It's honestly kind of bonkers to me. Like, how did they do that? Like, I was not expecting it, especially because this was like a fraction of the price of by the fireplace. Now, tragically, I don't even think this is available anymore. At the very least, I bought both these perfumes, um, Atelier de Sutil perfumes, earlier this year when a website that they used to be sold on was having like a clear out sale. That's why I bought two bottles because they were literally like half price. So I was like, fuck it, let me buy two. But now I know that when I finish Eau de Bois, like if I want to still have the experience of Eau de Bois, because I really do enjoy it. I, I love like a good woody scent. This to me, it smells like books and paper and the library and like those big wooden old desks that exist in really old libraries. And I'm like all about that vibe. So it is a relief to me to know that like when I finish this bottle all the way up, like if I still wanna experience this goodness um, and it's like no longer available, Replicas by the Fireplace is just like a, a slightly heavier, more marshmallowy version of this. My camera died again and I realized I have been talking for so long that the sun has set so I was sitting nearly in virtual darkness. So we're back on my phone and I have the room light on so I apologize for the garbage lighting. But the point I was trying to make when I was cut off is that By the Fireplace has just like incredible staying power. Kind of almost to its detriment um, because the thing is as much as I loved By the Fireplace when I lived in Toronto uh, which was very very cold and very very windy in Maryland Maryland, I feel like by the fireplace is almost like a little bit too much. Whereas Eau de Bois, because it's kind of lighter, it's less sweet, it doesn't have like the crazy longevity, I was able to like wear it all throughout even autumn without feeling kind of like choked and overwhelmed by it. When that guy runs out and when I eventually move back to Toronto and I'm dealing with like bitterly cold winters again, um, by the fireplace, excellent perfume. Okay, so the other BTS perfume that I bought from that collection is Eau de Verre, which literally means um, water of green. This was a perfume designed by Yoongi. He's one of the rappers and producers in BTS and the promotional images for Eau de Verre, as well as the name, you know, like water of green. It would lead you to think that this would be like a very fresh, very green 
smelling fragrance, right? Like just look at these promo images. There's greenery everywhere. This looks like fun and fresh and vibrant and summery. And that honestly, it's like not at all what this is. Because when you actually dig down to the notes of it, the top note is sweet orange. The middle notes are coconut, vanilla, and palisander rosewood, which is basically like a redwood. And then the base notes are patchouli, cedar, sandalwood, tonka bean, and moss. To my nose, and on my body, the overwhelming smell that I get from this, and I am so incredibly grateful for it, honestly, it's sandalwood and a little bit of like tonka bean. Like honestly, most of the other notes might as well not exist. Like sweet orange and coconut, don't get that at all. And let me tell you, while we were definitely scammed by the promo photos, like this is not a fresh fragrance, sandalwood, like Indian sandalwood, miss me with that like Santal 33 Australian sandalwood dill pickle genuine Indian sandalwood that like beautiful soft incensey sandalwood scent it is one of my favorite scents in the world sandalwood for me is a smell which lives in the hall of fame like it sits right up there with like the smell of white rice cooking Alfonso mangoes and petrichor that like monsoon India rain smell as one of my top five favorite smells of all time that exist in the world, period. And so despite the fact that I was hoodwinked and bamboozled by those promo images, I did not get like the fresh smelling perfume of my dreams. The fact that it basically just smells like straight up sandalwood on me, it is like a beautiful gift that I did not ask for and yet which perfectly suits my needs. So much so that if you were to ask me to actually pick my favorite between Eau de Bois and Eau de Verre, I would pick Eau de Verre. I, I, genuinely think this is my personal favorite. I'm going to be devastated when it like runs out. I, I feel like everybody is on some like Santal shit nowadays. I feel like I cannot find the scent of just like Indian sandalwood anywhere in perfumes. If you guys know of good sandalwood perfumes, like the Indian sandalwood, that sort of like incense kind of sandalwood, please let me know down below. I will keep an eye out for them as potential explorations for when this bottle finally runs out and my no buy year is over. Okay, so let's discuss the last full-size bottle of perfume I own, which is actually also coincidentally the very first bottle of perfume I ever owned in my entire life. This is Burberry. And I believe the brand now is just like, yeah, I guess it's just called Burberry. So this is Burberry by Burberry. So yeah, this nameless Burberry perfume, it actually belonged to my mom. My mom had bought this perfume literally over a decade ago now. This is a 100 milliliter bottle of the perfume and she used to use it very sparingly. Like my mom's signature scent is Lancôme's Magie Noir, right? That is like the primary smell that she uses on a day-to-day -day basis. She would only very rarely use these other perfumes because her signature scent is Lancôme's Magie Noir. Come hell or high water, doesn't matter what the season is, Magie Noir is what my mom is wearing. So 17 year old me, as all 17 year olds are wont to do, would very frequently sneak little like sprays of my mom's perfume in an effort to try and experience them. And I didn't really enjoy either of the two Chanel's. I also didn't really enjoy Magie Noir because it's another one of those like explosive 80s scent bombs. This Burberry perfume on the other hand, I fell in love. And when I turned 18, my mom asked me like, what do you want for your birthday? And what I asked her for was this perfume. So she gave me her bottle. Like this is her bottle of Burberry. It was the very first perfume bottle I ever owned for years. It was the only perfume bottle I owned. It was the only perfume I ever wore. And so slowly every single person in my family, they began to associate me with this scent. I think you can tell from my like pretty large perfume collection that I switch up my perfumes quite frequently. There is at this point in time, no genuine signature Prachi scent in the sense of like a perfume that I wear every single day. But if there were, if I had to pick one perfume as a signature Prachi scent, as the scent that probably the most people associate with me, it would be this. Considering that I just turned 28 last week, I have had this perfume bottle for a decade and every year, of that decade, I have without fail gone back to this bottle of perfume when I have just felt like I don't know what I wanna smell like. To me, this is my like default perfume. And I was so thoroughly associated with this perfume in my family that I actually got one of my aunts to start using this perfume. I also got one of my cousins to start using this perfume. And just this past year in 2021, my sister for her birthday asked me to buy her 
this exact perfume because she's like prachi it always smells so good and i'm always trying to like sneak little bits of it whenever i come and visit you you know how like i started off this video talking about how like one perfume for every season atelier cologne is my favorite winter perfume diptyque philosikos is my favorite spring perfume Jo Malone Wood Sage and Sea Salt is my favorite summer perfume. And my favorite perfume for my favorite season, autumn, it's Burberry by Burberry. If I could only have one perfume for each season, these four would be it. But if I could only have one perfume for the rest of my life, sorry to all these other expensive bottles I own, but she's really it. The month that I use this up and put this in my empties, I will genuinely mourn. So those are all 14 full size bottles. I'm gonna try and zoom right through the like travel size bottles. We've already talked about Atelier Cologne Vanille Insensé. I not only own this full size bottle, I also own this 10 ml tube. We've also already talked about Jo Malone Wood Sage and Sea Salt. I not only own this full size bottle, I also have this like tiny 9 ml bottle that I got I can't remember what year these, this was offered as the Sephora birthday present, but whatever year that was, that's when I got this tiny bottle. And it's still like lingering in my collection for some godforsaken reason. Then we already discussed um, Maison Margiela's By the Fireplace. I have two other Maison Margiela replica roller balls. So one is um, Whispers in the Library by Maison Margiela. The notes of this would literally just say pepper, vanilla, precious woods, cedar. So really like these come from the same DNA, but I enjoy the like freshness that the the lime and coriander provide to Vanilla and Sense a bit more than I do Whispers in the Library. The last replica Maison Margiela scent I own is Jazz Club. I'm obsessed with the way this smells on paper. I'm also obsessed with the way this smells on other people, but on me. Something about my body chemistry and this does not mesh well. I smell like I have had the like contents of an ashtray like dumped on my skin. It is, it is just like not good. Oh, I have Gucci Bloom. And oh, this is another one of those perfumes that I could tell you like a one hour long story about. But I guess the cliff note summary of this is there are only three notes in this perfume. Jasmine, Tube Rose, and Rangoon Creeper. In the Prachi Scent Hall of Fame, right up there next to Sandalwood, is the scent of Tube Rose. Gucci Bloom is the closest I have ever come to smelling what an actual Tube Rose smells like in a perfume. It's still not like 100% perfect, but damn, did this man get close. The other tube, and this is like almost over, there is like barely any perfume left in this, is uh, Commodities Nectar. So this is basically, it's a straight up like an orange blossom scent. I think if you've used the like Jo Malone orange blossom scent before, if you are a fan of orange blossom scents, just kind of like generally, you're probably going to enjoy this. I have this mini size of like Chloe by Chloe. I think I got this as like a Sephora point perk, who knows how long ago. There is a half used up seven milliliter bottle of Atelier Cologne Orange Sanguine. It just, it smells straight up like oranges. Don't know what else I can tell you. I also have a mini sample vial from the same company of Bergamot Soleil. And once again, it's a straight up like citrusy, orangey bergamot smell. Nothing really like complex about it. I have a mini size of the replica Whispers in the Library, which I've already talked about. I also have a mini sample vial of Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf. If Red Musk by Body Shop still exists, you don't need to buy Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf. They smell exactly the same. I also have here like a sample vial of Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black. I have never sprayed it in my life. I'm assuming this was just like a Sephora point perk. Another Sephora point perk that I have never used, don't even know what it smells like, is Versace Bright Crystal. And then I have this perfume oil from India. There is a store in India called Fab India. It's actually like a clothing store. We happened to see that they had like some of these perfume oils there. And this one, which is called Arabian Jasmine, it actually does a pretty good job of smelling like fresh jasmine. And then this last set of four mini roller balls I have have are from the company Clean. So I actually, so the set initially came with five roller balls. So I have Clean Rain, Clean Air, Clean Skin, and Clean Fresh Laundry. And then the one that I used up was Clean Warm Cotton. All of these other ones, they literally just smell like you just did laundry. So the TLDR summary of my inventory is that I have 14 full-size bottles and 19 travel size and sample vials of perfumes. With luck, I will actually use some of this shit up during 2022. If you have made it all the way to the very, very end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate you. You are a real one. I love you. Thank you. 
And um, as always, I hope you have an amazing upcoming week. Take care of yourselves. Bye!